And just for a second to introduce, we're going to share uh, some of the things that went on with the mission trip to Peru that we just got back from on uh, Friday. But here we have at the end of Matthew chapter 28, um, I'll give you a second to get to it there. We have, of course, what's known as the Great Commission there. And it says in beginning in verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, and of course this is after the resurrection, the last uh, thing here that Jesus declares to uh, his disciples. He says, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Just a couple of things I want to share about that before we get started. Notice the command there is to go and make disciples. In order to make disciples, a couple of things have to take place. One is you have to be a disciple. And in that, that's God's challenge to us, to first of all, be disciples. I love that last song on there, it said, as it just said, Lord, break my heart with what breaks yours. Lord, what is your heart here? What are you doing? You know, and, and so that should be our desire. And his desire is that we go and make disciples, make other people, starting with here. Where you don't, as the saying goes, you don't have to cross water in a in, in sense to be a missionary or be someone who's, um, who's involved in the furtherance of the kingdom of God. But make disciples and obviously baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And notice, I love this at the last phrase here. It says, and lo, in the midst of this, in doing this, he's saying, I'm with you always. Even until the end of the age. The cool thing about this is when you step out in the kingdom of God, you find that the Lord's there right in the midst of it. When you step out, whether it be to share with it, as Don mentioned, he and I went down two streets yesterday for a, a, about an hour passing out the uh, leaflets for the 4th of July cookout sort of outreach that we're doing. And, um, you know, you just see as you do stuff like that or go to Peru or whatever, that God's there. That he, as you step out in faith, he meets you, he uses you, and he furthers his kingdom. And that's what we saw, as I mentioned, as we went to uh, Peru. And the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to do is we're going to show some slides, some slides here. They're not, they're a little bit out of order just because didn't have time to put them in order. All of them in order. And, um, and I'll just I kind of highlight those and explain what happened. And then the, some of the team are going to come up and share their experiences. And there's the team, of course. Uh, John, Maria. Kristen, Cameron, and Don, and myself there in the back with a hat. Uh, this is what it generally looks like around Lima. There, yes, there's tall buildings, and you'll see, see some in there later, I believe. But the average building, oh, swipe back, yeah. The average uh, building, those are residences, or what they look like. And they can do continuing construction on the buildings. Like, you'll see a building and you'll see rebar sticking up out of the top. That's because they expected some time to add on. And so they just leave it like that so that they can uh, go right into it. Okay, go ahead and 
This is one of our projects. We, what we did while we were there, generally we replaced four toilets, tiled floors, uh, replaced works in other toilets, trimmed some doors, and painted during the time we were there. Um, to help, because what this is, this is our missionary, Brian Vandercody and his family. They have church here. They have the church. It's like, it's sort of, the house is sort of like a compound in the sense that um, there's three floors and in different sections. Interesting construction. It was like, you know, construct, you build different parts at different times and they kind of look kind of creative. So, this is the part, the church is on mostly on the first and second floor. And this was one of the bathrooms. It had, you know, old, old tile in there. And in this one in particular, you can see up there, they had different tiles, so it was mismatched. So um, we, Don leveled it off and then laid the tiles in there. Go ahead. That is one of our toilets that we were replacing. Interesting thing, if you ever had, guys, have you ever had a replace, well, ladies, too, have you ever had to replace a toilet? Uh, in, in the United States, you get the bolts that come up, you know, you get the ring around the drain and you have bolts that come up that you fasten the toilet. Not there. You drill the, to the bolts into the floor to uh, attach the toilet. So, and this, another thing we did there, this Christian, Kristen, and that's John up there, we cleaned the sign. There is so much soot and pollution. The, the west coast of Peru is desert, and it's kind of like Southern California in that um, it doesn't rain, virtually never rains, but this time of year, it's, it was really misty the whole time. It's kind of like, like their winter climate. It's, it's misty and it's overcast the whole time. But also, like Southern California, there's the mountains to the east, about 20 some miles away, but it creates an inversion layer, like it does in Los Angeles, and you're familiar with the Los Angeles smog. Well, you get it here too, and it was all over everything. In fact, that sign was so dirty that people thought the church was closed. And so, so, so we went up and, and cleaned that off as well as some other, did some other cleaning as well, cleaning in the church. Okay. Uh, the more of the you know, cleaning out. This was out. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, this is under the sign there. Let's see. This is John in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> oh, you like that picture, huh? It's like her serious. And she's seriously cleaning. This is their sanctuary. And um, one of the first things that, that we did, I think that's John up on the ladder there, uh, because of all the soot, you see the problem there, and you think, why don't these people clean their own church? Well, you have these people that are working so hard to make ends meet that they don't have the time to do it, to just, oh, you know, like we have rotating people in the congregation that do it. They don't have the time. And so, in fact, Brian, Brian Vandercody, the missionary, asked us if we'd come back every two months and clean the church <laughs> after we were there. So we, so that's what we did. All of those, you see those lights there, they're glass fixtures on the outside and had to open up and clean all of those off. And there was air conditioning units to the side. You know, they're just ceiling mounted units up on, on the side there that had to be cleaned off and those filters cleaned as well. Um, okay, next. Food. We ate a lot. Uh, well, those were like a cheese wrap, weren't they? Yeah, I'm not sure. They, you know, rolled them, fried them. You know, but this is a sauce. Now, you, now, I remember from being in Peru before, you would get this sauce put on stuff and you never knew what it was. Well, I found out a little more of what it was. This is actually a, it, you know, they take the peppers and they'll grind and they'll 
you know, put them in a blender or whatever, and then they'll, you know, make, the, make a sauce with that, and you put it on all kinds of stuff. You know, potatoes, everything you put it on. Next, and that's Cameron's face. Um, this was a Peruvian meal. And it might sound funny, but we ate a lot of food other than Peruvian food while we were there. We ate Italian food, we ate Chinese food, we ate Middle Eastern food, but this is Peruvian food. That's ceviche, which you're familiar with, probably. You know, we have plenty of Peruvian restaurants around here that serve ceviche. Um, up there uh, on the plate is kind of hard to see from here, but is shark. I ate shark, just fried it up, and ate the shark. So we had ceviche, which is fish that's chemically cooked in lemon juice, or you know that and the vegetables in there, and then we had shark. And those, that corn, that piece of corn there, that's the kind of corn they had. It's huge kernels. And that's like, you know. Next, that was my dessert one night. Not at this, we went out for ice cream. And of course, I got chocolate ice cream. Next, this is uh, what another thing we did is we placed the carpet on the stage for the, you know, we didn't know exactly what we were going to be doing when we went there. So, you know, I just kind of told the team, hey, we're going. Just however the Lord leads, whatever we do, because he didn't send us a list of what we needed to do. But we walked in there and saw this, on the stage the carpet was all ripped up. And we thought, you can't have that. So we went out and bought some carpet. And It's really e interesting to see how the Lord worked all of this out because it's like God organized the team for the need. Because think about that. If we went down there and replaced a lot of flooring. And who went? Who did God have go but Don and, you know, us? And, and so uh, it, really, it really worked out, and it really blessed them. Next. And then, again, that's his part of the laying the floor. That's, you see the wood design they have on the back wall? Those are bed slats. They actually put finish on a bed slats and put them on the wall because I noticed that because we slept in the bunk beds and those were the same as the slats. Uh, in fact, if you see that one on the bottom right, it has a hole in it because that's where the bolt goes uh, for, the, uh, for the bunk bed. Next, and that's, a, you know, with the floor cleared off, just another picture from there, I'm cleaning it off to get it ready. Now this is up on the third floor. And this is something we're praying about because another church had come in in the past not knowing, I think, not exactly knowing the climate and the situation. And they built these rooms up on the third floor, which was the roof. As I said, they just stick rebar up and continue. Um, and it, they built it out of wood. The problem is it's full of termites now. And it hasn't been that long. So we're praying about what the Lord would have us do to uh, alleviate the situation and basically rebuild it. So, so something to pray about. And going over to the left there is where the Vander Cody's live, and that's their, their kind of their patio up there where their, where their dog... Uh, what? Clark. That's it. I keep thinking Clyde when I say Clark for some reason. You can't want to call the dog Clyde or Claude. Uh, but it's Clark. He, he hangs out up there, and then they have a roof on top of their house where he goes up and relieves himself, usually. Um, next, uh, that's, this is the stage, obviously, afterwards, and that's his uh, pulpit that he uses. Next. Uh, there's us eating again. That's where we usually ate was in the uh... dining room. You know, the guy, same guy who built this pulpit, and there was a lot of these pulpits going around because they're uh, collapsible, and, but he also built all their dining room furniture. Those tables he, he built there and the benches, he built all of that. He built trash cans for them that you can, 
you know, put covers over and that sort of thing as well. So he went down there for like a couple of months and did all this work. Next. Another toilet. How do you like that? that? This is the new toilet where that old toilet used to be. All right. Next. Enough toilet. This is a dessert. <laughs> Important. And the reason I show it is different. I forget what the cream was. It was fine. But, that, but the fruit, the sauce on top of it was from this fruit that you get. It has a, like a crusty outside. It's almost like you know how when you put that kind of chocolate that gets hard on ice cream? That's kind of like the outer part of this fruit is. And you break that and you peel it off. And then it has kind of like uh, a skin on the inside. But normally what you do is you just pop all of that in your, in your mouth. And then on the inside of that, there's like this kind of sliminess with seeds. Well, that's what the sauce is made out of. But it was good. It tastes really good. Next. <laughs> Food. Again, this is, we're eating at an Italian restaurant in Lima, Peru. Because um, one of the members of the church owns an Italian restaurant. And he wanted us to come over for, before we left. And that was what we did on Thursday before we, uh, before we left. It was good. Lots of food. Next. Food. Chinese food. <laughs> yes, we ordered in you know, some guy, some of the folks from the church. Went, what day was that we did that? Sunday? Yeah, that was after church on Sunday. We had Chinese. There's a lot, there's a large Chinese population in Peru. And their food, their Chinese food is better than any Chinese food I've tasted in the U.S. Ours tends to, here we, they, you go to those places, they tend to all over salt it and everything, but here you actually tasted the food. It was really good. Next. This is along the coastline. One day we, we were up there, and um, you can see there's an island off, off to the right there a little bit that they boat people out to, and you can swim with sea lions and stuff like that. Next. This is nearby there. Well, the reason I got a picture of that, you see, and I go, what is that? It looks like they were, had something built. It. That was the sewer. The sewer used to empty out into the ocean, at the beach. It would just go directly out into it. They've since halted that, obviously, because it was kind of bad for tourism. You don't get many sur surfers and things like that. People want to go out in the water when your sewer empties directly into it. But we went, and then when we... That's our missionary, Brian Vandercody. And Maria comes up behind us and says, Pastor. And so we both turn around and look, and she snaps the picture. We were going through an artistic district there on one of, on one of our uh, evenings. Next. Food. More food. Some pasta with different sauce on it. What's that? You're done with the pictures. You're hungry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time for fellowship piece, right? Next. Cake. No, it was um, Pastor Brian's father who he's brought down there. He brought his father and his mother both down there, but his mother died a month, yeah, roughly a month ago. She had Alzheimer's, and she eventually died, but his father's still there, and it was his father's birthday the same day it was Maria's birthday um, so they had actually two cakes um, and so we celebrated together with them next there's the other cake next this food this is the Middle Eastern food we ate I don't know how this is Middle Eastern but we go to this Middle Eastern restaurant and serve, serve lamb I get lamb on french fries with a sauce on top of it. So, now, we, I wanted to go, I wanted to take the team to two places, but we ended up not being able to get into them. 
One, I wanted to get them into the, go into the main cathedral, but that was closed down because it's on the main square where the presidential palace was, and the president had shut down Congress for some reason. And so they had police barricades around, so we couldn't get in. Um, another place I wanted to take them was the, um, the Museum of the Inquisition because a lot of people don't know that Peru was the center for the Spanish Inquisition in the Western Hemisphere, Lima was. And so there's actually a torture chamber, but they said the police that were there by, nearby it said it was closed for uh, maintenance sort of thing. So we went to this other basilica here, St. Francis Basilica. Uh, there was a it's named for St. Francis, but they also had the priest that came over here was named Francis as well, so they kind of had this whole thing going. And it was pretty interesting, I'll put it that way. They have, they have you go down, eventually, you, you know, you go through, see all these pictures and see all these designs and wood carving and all of this stuff. Go down in the basement and they have the bones of all the priests that, that had served there all the years stuck in different cubbies in different, you know, you'll have the femurs over here and, you know, the clavicles in this other cubby, you know, as they just separated it all and they have all these skulls and some, some of them in designs, you know, all kinds of, it was definitely interesting. Next, there's the same area but it had uh, pigeons all over the place flying around, getting stirred up. It looks like Don chasing pigeons. I, now, interesting here, notice the pyramid on the side. See, what they did, and even when you see some of the statues of the Madonna, you'll see that she forms, with her dress and everything, she forms a pyramid. Now, what that is, is in, you know, the, when you go to a third world country, you don't see the Catholic Church as you see it here in the United States. Down there, they, well, they tend to be syncretistic in, in that they combine uh, the reli religion, the native religion with Catholicism, and they combine it with a lot of uh, you know, the pyramid and everything was a symbol of Mother Earth. So they combine Mother Earth with Mary and get all of that sort of thing going there. Next, um, John upstairs painting. Those are Sunday school rooms on the second floor. Next. Maria painting down the stairway. Where was that, Maria? Okay. Um, Lima's obviously uh, separated out into different districts, and this was uh, how you pronounce it. Yeah, that. Um, and you know, just doing your chops. The church is in an area called Circo. That place that she just said was is more of where they more up, upper class and they have a lot of shops and you know that sort of thing there. So next, that was Kristen. She shared with the ladies uh, on on Saturday, last Saturday giving her testimony. Next. What's that? Yeah, next. You get the idea from that. We're eating again. Um, that's, in the, that's in the Italian restaurant again. Next. We're eating again. Imagine, here we were eating this, we got this, the guy who owned the Italian restaurant, he was from Cusco originally. So he served uh, kind of traditional soup and meal from Cusco. That, that, that was the day um, after we made the chocolate. Oh, it was after we made the chocolate. Yeah, yeah you'll see there's some pictures of making the chocolate in here. Next, there's making the chocolate. This is a little bit, yeah, you can see them wrapping up and if you didn't grab a chocolate back there, uh, there weren't a lot of them, so. Uh, so they use they use the selling of this chocolate. They'll have different things out on the on the count, counters, 
to sell, um, and they use it to support their missions. Uh, next week, Brian and his family are going to be going up into the jungle to uh, minister. He goes up there for a month every year and ministers up there. Next. And that see all the, the shells were in these the plastic, so you got that, and then you put the, the caramel and the pecan in it, and then they melted other chocolate, which you see from that bowl, and laid out over the top of it. So they had a nice little assembly going on there. That's uh, in the middle. There is Anji. She's a, a neat lady. I met her originally when I was down there before. It's been 12 years since I was there last, but she's been there and involved in the ministry. And the, when the Bible college was in Lima, she was involved in ministry there too. And she had gone to India before as a missionary. Now she's praying about going to the Middle East. She wants to uh, minister to Muslim women. Yes, yeah, Syria specifically. Yeah. Next. There's Maria with her tongue out again. There was a, go back to that for a second. Um, that archway behind it, it's in Lima, not far from where the church is, but it, it, a couple of arches there, but you'll notice uh, kind of Middle Eastern Moorish design on a lot of the things, because of course the Muslims invade, invaded Spain and that you know influenced the architecture. What's that? The Friendship Arch is what the name of it? That's why your tongue's out, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Next. That's at the ice cream shop. Next. That's still at the ice cream shop. John making a face. Next. <laughs> Boy, they were good with faces. This is, you go, this is what you go in the mission field to Peru to learn how to. It's like make faces. Next. <laughs> What's that? It was. What day was that we did that? It was. That was Friday? Last Friday, yeah. Um, that's more pictures of ceviche and shark. Next. I was surprised how good the shark tastes. That it? Good. All right, now what I'd like to do is take a few minutes. You know, obviously you saw the pictures, but that doesn't really tell you uh, the heart of what went on there. And so what I'd like to do is for different people from the team to come up and, and share. Maria, how, would you like to come up first? I, well, nobody's asking for your English to be perfect. We know. You don't need to apologize. You do fine. Okay, so um, what I want to share first of all is um, I have so much fun cleaning. <laughs> it was so, so much fun. And at the same time, it was really hard. They have everything like filthy, every single part. Uh, we clean um, the refrigerator, stove, walls. Um, what else we clean? I don't remember. It was so much things. The fans, yeah, the light features, um, and then, well, like Pastor said in the photos, we ate a lot. <laughs> Actually, I don't feel like eating like that anymore. I'll get it stop. So, and, and it's something that I love to do, eat, right? You know me. So um, it's what I want to say that um, the, what is Saturday in the evening, the fellowship and the worship, the service, it was amazing. I received a lot of, of the energy, like the good spirit that that church has, especially with the youth. And um, I, just, I just miss it because I was telling pastor and everyone was telling that we need, you know, young people to bring more like fire. And, um, and we're gonna work on that. Um, pray is what the main thing we, we need to do, pray. Pray to have that here in our church. 
and I'm enjoying so much. Thank you for the invite, and I'll do it again, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> It's cool because you, you see, you know, you think of all the th things you, in a situation like that, which you think of things that people don't have, but when you go down there, you see what they do have in the relationship with the Lord because they're depending on the Lord. So, you know, it's just exciting to see just how, you know, Obviously, there's different people with different situations and problems, but you just see a genuine heart for the Lord with um, many of the people down there. So, John, you want to share? Next. I know one word. Hola. <laughs> it was, um, it's wonderful to be home. <laughs> I haven't had a good night's sleep since we left. And I will tell you why. <clears throat> the traffic there, it's insane. Um, there's signs and stuff. Everything is just suggestions. So I noticed even past the way he drove. Everybody hunks horns. This goes on all night. I felt like I was in Manhattan and rush hour, even at 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's cutting everybody off. And when it slows down a little bit, the, the light would change. and. The cars would come, the motorcycles. Motorcycles, forget about it. That's even the pastor said to get to the doctors, you save two hours by taking a motorcycle because they drive on the sidewalks, in and out of the cars, you know, one inch away from you. It's, it's, it's a, it was an, a, amazing to see how they all operate. But I do have to say uh, what really amazed me is how God put it all together. Oh, you know, oh and the other thing too, there's 10 million people uh, congested, you know, so it's like, it, it's packed, it, it's busy all the time. 11 o'clock at night, you go out, it's like rush hour all the time, it's unbelievable. We didn't sleep good, but that's what I was talking about. As uh, soon as you start to go to sleep, the cars all race by, there's three lanes, and it's, it was amazing, the noise. But what amazed me is how God did put it all together, what Pastor was saying when, uh, when we got there, how everything just kind of fell into place. Uh, with Don, with the flooring, and uh, just to be able to all, you know, find our little niches where we can help out. It was, it was, you know, we went there and, and thinking we're going to bless them. Well, I tell you something, I was more blessed, and to see how these people live and to see the love from these people, even at the services, uh, you know, they're all kissing, they all hug, and they. Uh, even the little kids I'm walking by and, you know, we're so different here. It's almost like religion compared to what they are. You see the Holy Spirit. You can feel it in there. And uh, just even walking by the little tiny little girl, don't even speak English. She looks up at me. She's, give me a hug. So it was, it was you know, I was crushed by that. And, and their, their worship, phenomenal. It was, uh, they ministered to me just to see. And, uh, you know, even... The stuff that we have, we're so comfort with this life that we have here. I mean, every faucet and every bathroom, and even at the kitchen sink, I was telling Terry, I go, there's no hot water. They got one tap, cold water, that's it. So it's like, you know, you don't realize all the comforts that you have until you, you know, you come here. So, and, the, you know, the whole time we, got, we were gone, it was the winter, considered the winter season there. Um, I think the second to the last day, the sun finally came out for about 20 minutes and then it started going down. So it's really nice to come back and see the sun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it was like I said, we were, we were just blessed um, at how the Lord put it all together. It was uh, an amazing, amazing to see uh, how other people, you know, are surviving and how God's moving. Um, it did... You know, we went out, we were handed out tracks, and to see the, uh, uh, all the people, when Venezuela went down, which is not too far, they were getting 2,000 people a day coming in. So you see people sitting all over the place, and families were holding little babies, looking up at you, and I just, it really broke my heart to see, you know, and then walking out in those crazy streets, the traffic cutting everybody off, and you see people selling potato chips, little candies, homemade stuff. 
And I'm saying, these people are taking their lives in their hands the way they're driving. And uh, uh, Pastor Brian says, well, they're trying to make enough money so they can get a meal, so they can eat at night. And so it's very sad. We, we, you know, we, are, we have it so good, we don't realize it. And to see how God moves with people like that definitely ministered to me. So thank you. And one thing about the climate, you mentioned it was, it was winter there. What that meant, the coldest it got while we were there was 58. But it's this time of year, it's damp. And as he said, it was overcast the whole time. And the reason I mention that is because the buildings aren't sealed up. You know, you'll have windows, like in the room we're standing in, there are windows, but the windows weren't sealed around the edges. They're set so you can open them and stuff like that. So whatever the temperature is, the climate is outside, it also is inside. And so uh, one of my favorite times during the day was finally getting to crawl into bed and wrap myself up in a blanket so I felt a little bit warm and not damp. But maybe next time we'll go a different time of year. Um, let's see, who's next? Don. Yeah, just as everybody else has shared, it was an amazing experience and probably the biggest thing that I took from it was the, the heart of Brian and Betty. Um, they're not really about growing their church they are about growing the kingdom. Um, they, they just have such a heart for the lost. Again, just like the song said, you know, break my heart for what breaks yours. And Brian, <clears throat> even posting on Facebook there while we were there about how he doesn't feel like he's doing enough for the kingdom. And here we are watching him nonstop proclaiming Jesus as his Lord and Savior and that he should be yours too, that he died for your sins and just the fire that he has in his belly to see others come to the Lord is a desire that I have. I, I brought that back with me and now I, there's no reason that we're not doing that very same thing in our neighborhoods. We need to be just as concerned about the person that lives across the street as they are about the people on the other side of the world. So that's, that's been my prayer from seeing what's going on there and again, the love that they have for one another, they completely trust in the Lord because they don't know where their next meal is coming from, half of them. So our luxury has made us weak and soft, whereas theirs, their um, struggles have grown their faith because they see the Lord working all around them. That's really what I got out of it. Cameron, you want to share? <laughs> you didn't think I was going to call on you, did you? Hey, guys. Uh, I don't really know what to say. It was pretty fun. I learned how to fix toilets and, <laughs> and clean light fixtures. Uh, I love the attitude of everybody there how loving and accepting they are and just different here but yeah so if you need a toilet fixed <laughs> all right Kristen <laughs> yeah, Cameron also told me yesterday, he was a little down yesterday, and he told me that he wants to go back to Peru, that he realized that how much he likes to help people, and he thinks that maybe he might have a different calling on his life than he thought before he left. He didn't say that in so many words, but that's, as his mom, that's what I got from it. Um, I don't really have too much more to add than what everybody else already said. It was very humbling. Um, you know, like everyone said, we had no heat. It was very dirty. 
and that was only for 10 days. Those people live like that all the time, and their love and their hunger for the Lord is just, you can't describe it. You really have to experience it. Betty and Brian are unbelievable. That's where they live, where we stayed. And again, the conditions are not much to be desired. Um, Maria and I did a lot of cleaning, and the whole time I kept thinking, my mother would just not be, that you cannot clean without any hot water. You know, with those, well, great, we had hot wa water for showers, but not to do dishes or clean or to have any cleaning supplies. Um, and it was like to clean, and then the next day everything was just black again. I mean, you really couldn't clean enough. And that's how they live. And they're grateful. They're grateful for the little bit of roof that they have over their head. And I just feel very ungrateful. You know, I feel like for me personally, I'm always looking for what can I get next or this isn't comfortable or, and it was just very humbling and I'm so grateful that I had um, the opportunity to go and I can't wait to go back. Um, Brian and Betty just do so much and I just want to do for them and I just ask that we all remember to keep them in prayer. They are the missionaries that we sponsor. I'm grateful for the relationship that we have with them. I've always known about them, but never knew them. And now that I know them personally, you know, we, 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 we really need to keep them in prayer and, and always, and, you know, see what they need to, so they can continue their ministry. When we had church, uh, of course, I didn't understand a word they were saying. But the worship was just so heartfelt. I was bawling because the love that they have for the Lord is just unbelievable. So it was a wonderful experience, and we need to reach out more here. The people were so receptive, um, accepting the tracts that we were handing out, and we had meetings. The team had meetings every morning, and um, you know, a few of us said that we felt like people here you know, in America weren't as receptive as the people in Peru, you know, handing out the tracts. Whether they were old or young, very few of them rejected it or gave us dirty looks. You know, we might pass them again, and they were actually reading them. And at our meeting, we felt like people in America, you know, they would have a snide remark or, or whatever, you know. Um, but that's not true. You know, I, I was so glad when my husband came home yesterday and told me how receptive the neighborhood was to receiving the invitations to the 4th of July get-together that we're going to have. So we, need to, we have a lot of things that we need to pray about um, and continue to work on. We're all a work in, in progress, so that's all. Uh, the whole time that we were there, I did keep uh, making note of prayer requests that they have there. I'm going to have that put together in, with an explanation for each one of those prayer requests, and we'll have a stack of them there for you guys to take home so you know how to pray for the ministry over there and the individuals that are listed on there, okay? Um, just a couple of things you can be praying about for uh, Brian and Betty. They both have a couple of health issues that, that um, Betty, she's had like this ongoing bronchitis for sort of thing for a couple of months and problems going on with her sinuses and her throat and she was getting, you know, kind of test for that because she's taking my antibiotics and they didn't get rid of it. So I can be praying for her for that. And Brian was getting these incredible headaches and, uh, and they're thinking it was from, it's from TMJ. And so he was getting fitted for a uh, fitted for a, a mouthpiece to to be able to sleep and things like that. So those are practical ways you can be praying for him. And as I mentioned, um, next week they're going to be going up. He's taking his 81 year old father as well, you know, in the family and going up to the jungle for a month and ministering up there. So, 
you know, be in prayer about that. They definitely have an effective ministry. They definitely have, you know, those people reaching out to people uh, around them. And it's just, uh, uh, it was a real blessing to be there. Um, Brian asked me in a conversation if, um, you know, if he says, if you see anything with me that's out of lines, you know, just let me know. I'd like to, like to hear it. I said, out of line. I said, you have more of a situation here that I'd like to emulate rather than criticize. You know, just because, again, love the love for the Lord. And I said, it was kind of like um, down there, those of us who have gotten saved during the Jesus movement, and remember kind of what the time was like then. That's kind of the situation it was like down there now. In that, you know, there's an excitement. The first time I was there, or, you know, and I was there earlier, 12 and I think 14, 15 years ago. Um, the population of Christians in Peru was about 2% of the population. Now it's between eight and 10% of the population. So the gospel is spreading in Peru and it's exciting to be uh, a part of it. In fact, we're looking at, well, this may be a yearly thing that we do. Go down there and, and see the needs and, you know, and, and seek to help them. And this is what we do, what to do with our missionaries, is just to come alongside them and help them to do what God's called them to do in whatever way we can, you know, to encourage them in the ministry that God has for them down there. So it's exciting to see, and I would just say, hey, more of, more of us should pray about going to see if the Lord would have you to go. They said it'll be about a year or so, but uh, then, but definitely be praying about that. And the exciting thing about it, and right, you know, the reason it's been a while since I went the last time, it's been about 12 years, is, you know, just before the Lord, I kind of said and I told other people, I'm not going to go again until I take people with me. And the reason for that the reason i think going on short-term mission trips is so important is because you get out of your environment and your comfort zone and you go into another situation here in this example in a third world country and you see god work and as you can tell by the testimonies that the team shared you come back with the sense of the, you know, and a feeling of, well, why not here? And there's absolutely no reason why not. We tend to look at things here in so in so much on natural terms, of oh, we can't do this because of this, or we can't do this because of that. And they. If they wanted down there, if they wanted to, they could have infinitely more excuses uh, than we do. But they're serving the Lord. I love it because on one day, uh, Maria came back. She was, was that on the day you did, when you were with Angie in the uh, taxi? That was the day, was that the day you shared with the ladies? Well, she shared it with a ladies' meeting one morning, and they came back, and uh, on the way back, Angie was, was sharing with the taxi driver in the, uh, on, the, on the way back, you know, driving her to the church, and, you know, just naturally sharing the gospel with the guy. And the cool thing I, I saw in it is after that, then later on your, on your trip, another that was to the airport in the taxi, um, Maria had the same opportunity after seeing, seeing that to share the gospel with the taxi driver that drove her to the, drove her to the airport. 
So it's, you know, and that's what we say about like passing out these leaflets in the neighborhood. You know, you don't see the hand of God to this extent unless you're willing to step out in faith in one way or another. You pray, think, okay, Lord, what would you have us to do? And you step out in it. And if the Lord's in it, he works. And, and so, you know, we should drop a lot of our inhibitions in respect to that because, you know, it's like when you think about down there and then you look at here and you think, well, why not? Like maybe, you know, in some ways you have to reach people differently for cultural reasons. But still, you know, you pray and you share and you see what God does. It's just It really is as simple as that. It really is that simple. So obviously, you know, I'm not going to open my Bible and teach for 45 minutes or more because you'd all be mad at me if I did. Um, no. Um, but I'll go ahead and pray, and then we can, have, then we can set up for the fellowship feast and, and spend some time around there uh, sharing some more or have any questions about any of that. Uh, oh, let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for how you used us, how you use us as a church, even in supporting them, Lord. And as your word says, you know, those who give a cup of water in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. And I just thank you for the opportunity we have in sharing in this ministry in Peru, Lord. Pray for your continued blessing on Brian and Betty and the ministry down there, Lord just for the moving of your spirit there, but here as well, Lord. And help us to, again, just have that simple trust in you, Lord, to know you love us and you desire to use us, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let, let's set up. We'll move these chairs. We're going to, something a little bit differently. We're going to set in these chairs and not get out the folding chairs because they're kind of buried because we're rearranging things. Um, so we'll use these chairs around the table, but we'll set up the tables over here like normal. Everybody stay. Everybody stay. Is that...